Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering, where we will be learning about the first moment of area and how to find the centroid of a section, along with the importance of knowing the centroid of a section. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the button below. In the previous video, we saw how the area of a section has a great impact on the behaviour of a structure. And likewise, the location of the centroid of a section impacts the behaviour of the structure as well. In structural analysis, it is common to define a distributed load over an area as a concentrated load applied to a single point, which is the centroid of the area. By doing this, we will be able to simplify many calculations throughout structural analysis, hence the desire to be able to determine the location of the centroid. We have already learned how to find the centroid of an area using integration in a previous video, so I'll leave the link to that in the description for if you wish to check that out. And therefore, in this video, we'll have a look at other methods for finding the centroid of a section. And we'll finish with an example problem implementing the concept of the first moment of area to find the centroid of a complex region. The first and simplest method for finding the centroid of a section is experimental. Consider a section of any geometry, with a constant thickness and density. For this example, we will use a triangle with an area of A. Due to gravity, the section is subject to a uniformly distributed weight W, pulling the section towards the ground. As we stated at the beginning, the distributed load can be converted to a concentrated load being applied to the centroid of an area. Therefore, our uniformly distributed weight can be considered as a concentrated load, W times A, which is being applied to the centroid of the section. If we were to now apply a force in the upwards direction equal to the concentrated load at the centroid, we would guarantee equilibrium. So, all we need to do to find the centroid is to find this point that guarantees equilibrium for the section. A real-life example of this would be a circular tabletop on top of a single pole. If we were to move the pole to one edge of the board, the board would fall. However, if we were to position the pole in the centre of the board, the board would balance on top of the pole. And so, we know that the centroid is at the centre of the circular board. Although this method is not very efficient, it is good for visualising the concept of the centroid of a section and its significance to a structure. A more analytical method we could use is to consider the weighted average of the area. For this concept, we will start off by considering a system made entirely of particles, and by particles, I just mean points that have mass. And by considering the weighted average of the coordinates of these points, we will be able to determine the centroid of the system. Using this method, we must determine the x-coordinate of the centroid separately to the y-coordinate. And starting off, to calculate the weighted average of the x-coordinates of the points, we will need to sum the weights multiplied by the x-coordinates of each point, and then divide this by the total weight for all points. Doing so, the x-coordinate of the centroid, xc, is equal to xa times ma plus xb times mb plus xc times mc all divided by MA plus MB plus MC. Substituting the corresponding weights and x-coordinates for each point, we get the weighted average of the x-coordinates for the system, i.e. the x-coordinate of the centroid of the system, XC, is equal to 2.1. Now we just need to repeat this process for the weighted average of the y-coordinates for the system, and doing so, the y-coordinate of the centroid of this system, YC, is equal to 5 times 5 plus 3 times 2, plus 2 times 3, all divided by 5 plus 2 plus 3, which equals 3.7. So therefore, we can conclude that the location of the centroid for this system of particles, xc, yc, is equal to 2.1, 3.7. With a slight altercation, this approach can also be used to determine the centroid of a region. Considering a triangle, for example, the region can be divided into many tiny rectangles. The x-coordinate of the centroid is then given by the sum of the area of each rectangle times the corresponding x-coordinate, which is then divided by the total area. And then, exactly the same process is carried out for the y-coordinate of the centroid. It comes with intuition that the more rectangles the region is split into, the more accurate the result will be. And to prove this, for example, if the triangle was composed of 1 meter by 1 meter sized squares, the total area would be 10 meters squared, which is 2 meters squared greater than the actual area. Whereas if the triangle was composed of 0.5 meter by 0.5 meter sized squares, 
The total area would be 9 meters squared, which is only 1 meter squared greater than the actual area. For us to get results that are accurate enough to use, we would need to use far too many rectangles to be efficient for hand calculations. And so, this method is not really used for hand calculations. However, it is a useful technique for implementing in a software, like AutoCAD for example, as a software can be programmed to process long and many calculations very quickly. A more common method used for determining the centroid of a complicated region is through integration, but as I said at the start of the video, we have already covered that before, so we won't cover that methodology again today. The last method we will introduce today uses the concept of the first moment of area. The centroid of a complex region can be determined by dividing the region into simpler sections and then using the weighted average of the different regions. To demonstrate this method, we will consider the following irregular t-section. The first step for determining the centroid of a section like this is to establish a set of coordinate axes. This will give us a plane to reference our location for the centroid of the section. For this example, we will establish the x and y axis such that the bottom edge of the t-section is at y equals 0 and the left edge of the t-section is at x equals 0. The next step is to divide the section into simpler shapes, and for us, this section can be divided into two rectangles like so. Now we can calculate the x-coordinate of the centroid of the entire region by summing the x-coordinates of the centroids times the areas for each rectangle, all divided by the sum of the areas for each rectangle, which for this example is expressed as the x-coordinate of the centroid of rectangle A times the area of rectangle A, plus the x-coordinate of the centroid of rectangle B times the area of rectangle B, all divided by the area of rectangle A plus the area of rectangle B. The numerator of the equation above is denoted as the first moment of area around the y-axis, as it is computed as a distance from the y-axis given as an x-coordinate. The first moment of area relative to the y-axis is denoted as Sy, and is given by the sum of all the centroids times the areas for each shape. And therefore, the x-coordinate of the centroid of the entire region can be expressed more simply as xc equals sy over a, where a is the area of the entire region. It is common knowledge that the centroid of a rectangle lies along its two lines of symmetry, which is just the centre. So, using this information, we know that the x-coordinate of the centroid of rectangle a is 15, and the x-coordinate of the centroid of rectangle b is 12.5. Additionally, we can work out that the area of rectangle A is 150 mm squared and the area of rectangle B is 125 mm squared. Therefore, substituting these into our equation for the x coordinate of the centroid of the entire region, xc is equal to 15 times 150 plus 12.5 times 125, all divided by 150 plus 125, which equals 13.9. So we can conclude that the centroid of the entire section is 13.9 millimetres away from the y-axis. Now, it is just a case of repeating this process for the y-coordinate. Again, using our knowledge that the centroid of a rectangle lies along its two lines of symmetry, we know that the y-coordinate of the centroid of rectangle A is 7.5, and the y-coordinate of the centroid of rectangle B is 17.5, and we already know the areas of the rectangles from before. Therefore, the y-coordinate of the centroid of the entire region, yc, is equal to 7.5 times 150 plus 17.5 times 125, all divided by 150 plus 125, which equals 12. So we can conclude that the centroid of the entire section is 12 millimeters away from the x-axis. And so, the centroid of the entire t-section is located at coordinates xc, yc, equals 13.912. In that example, we discussed how it's common knowledge that the centroid of a rectangle lies along its two lines of symmetry, which in equation form is b over 2 for the x-coordinate of the centroid and h over 2 for the y-coordinate of the centroid. It is also common knowledge that for a triangle, the y-coordinate of the centroid is one-third of the height from the base. So in equation form, it is equal to h over 3. And finally, it is common knowledge that for a quarter of a circle, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the centroid is equal to 4r divided by 3pi, where r is the radius of the circle. Although we did not require the last two shapes for the example, 
There are some sections that will require the information for those shapes when finding the centroid, so I recommend committing these to memory as it will make your life much easier in the future. In the next video, we will be using the concept of the first moment of area to find the location of the centroids for the following examples. And to summarise what we have covered in this video, we introduced the concept of the centroid of a region and its significance, looking at a method for finding the centroid through trial and error, then how we can find the centroid of a system of particles using the weighted average of the coordinates of the points. Next, we saw how we could implement this method for regions instead of systems of particles. However, it's not efficient for hand calculations. And we finished by introducing the concept of the first moment of area and how we can use it to determine the location of the centroid of a complex shape. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.